Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today I am working on another vintage quilt block. Today it's called the Carolina Lily. Now this pattern traditionally is made with diamonds and I didn't want to do diamonds so I have a pattern here for you where there aren't any diamonds in it. So it's um, kind of in between a beginner and an intermediate block since uh, the diamonds are out of the picture now and I found this pattern online it's from the fat quarter shop and it is a free pattern on their site so I'll put a link down in the description box below where you can pick up this pattern if you want and um, I'll show you the block that I have made this is my sample right here and this was made with the same fabrics I made the English Ivy um, block out of and that is uh, Jane Austen at Home Fabrics. I'm going to adjust the camera and I'm going to show you the pieces you need and then I'll start working on the block. Okay I've got all of my pieces um, cut out and I have them labeled. Fat Quarter Shop uses um, a lettering system um, so each piece that is cut out has is assigned a letter so I just clip those on with my um, wonder clips and I just wrote the letters down on a piece of paper tore them out and put them on there so um, this is made in four different sections and the first thing we're going to do is work on the flower blocks and there's two different blocks the flower here that goes in this corner is different from these two so these two are the same this one is different and uh, I think you can see this has got a lot more of the pink fabric in it than what this one does so um, we're going to start on this one first and you see we have flying geese units we have cornerstones uh, another flying geese here flying geese here so um, it's just all a matter of breaking the block down. Now they, they took care of the diamonds so that you don't have to worry about those because uh, normally these pieces here would all be diamonds that would be sewn in together into the center here. So um, if you could imagine this line would come down to the center and up through each one of these and so these would all all four of these pieces would be diamonds so they eliminated that by making the points out of flying geese units so I think that's pretty clever and makes the block a lot easier to do so first thing I'm going to do is start working on the flying geese units and to do that I need to draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of the fabric C squares which are these here so I'm going to turn those over and do that. Now if you want a pattern for a quilt uh, you can also buy that at the Fat Quarter Shop. They have a couple of different um, sizes already written up in their their low-cost patterns. They're not very expensive at all so and they're available for download so um, you can get them immediately so uh, that's nice too and just mark with whatever um, pen you want to use, pen or pencil or chalk marker, whatever you want to. Now this is the line you're going to stitch on so uh, just keep that in mind. Okay, so I've got those done and then I'm going to take the J pieces which are these background pieces and make the flying geese units out of these. Okay, so I'm ready to get started and um, I'm just going to line up my square onto my rectangle and I'm going to stitch on that drawn line and I'm using a 50 weight thread in, in a cream color. This is um, So Fine by Superior and it's color number 402. and I'm going to stitch at a 2.0 setting.
Okay, now I'm going to cut off the excess leaving uh, a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And now I'm going to press these triangles up so I'll have this. Okay, now that I have them all pressed, I'm going to sew on the other square. And this one is going to go in the opposite direction. So it's going to go from, the line is going to go from this point to this one. to trim and press just like I did the first time around. Okay now I'm going to take the fabric E square and I'm going to draw a diagonal line on the back of that one and then I take my E square or my A square and we're going to line this up to one corner right sides together and stitch on that drawn line. cushion on. Okay, so we have this and then I'm going to trim this corner off, even a quarter inch seam allowance. and then I'm going to press this corner out. Okay, so here's that unit. And we just need one of these. And now we can assemble that first flower. So um, what I need to do first is to get an L square. So now I need to take one of the L squares. I'll just take one out. And I'm going to I'm going to lay out the pieces um, so that I don't get confused. Um, I have my corner triangle here, and this L square is going to go here. And I need my flying geese units, one at the top and one to the side, with the pink colors matching. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these two together, the top one in the corner. Start with that, and I'm going to put the flying geese on the top so that I can keep the seam from flipping on me. And then I need to press. I'm going to press the flying geese towards the square. So this seam is going to go this direction. So I'm pressing it towards the, the square, which is what the directions say to do. And then I need to sew the other flying geese unit to this side of the unit here. So I'm going to turn this over so I can watch the point of that flying geese and um, not blunt that tip off. So I'm going to stitch right to the right side of that. So I 
preserve my tip and then the instructions say to press towards the larger unit so we'll do that so I've got that done and I also need to sew these two units together now so the way they're pressed um, my seams will nest together so I won't have any problems there and I'm going to go ahead and pin that seam much of the flower there we go I have that much of the flower done now I need to press and I will press the seam in the back down so here we go now I need to add a strip eye which is only one I'm going to take this eye piece and it's going to go on this side so I'm going to do that now these instructions have a lot of pictures so it's real easy to um, follow the directions and then I'm going to sew with the background down so I can watch my seams then we'll press that seam towards the background so this is what we have so far now I need to add a strip here and this is strip number H so I have my strip number H and this goes here And I'm going to go ahead and pin this one. So I'm pinning both ends. And then I'll pin in the center. And that should help me keep everything all lined up. any um, points I need to worry about here so I just need to sew the only thing I'm is watching is make sure my seams don't flip up okay so there we have that unit and I will press this seam towards the background so here we go there is that unit and this should measure eight and a half by eight and a half so we've got one unit done okay now I need the K squares and I need to draw a diagonal line on the back side of those 
is we're going to make flying geese units again and we're going to make them with the K squares and the F rank rectangles. And then here are my F squares. We're going to make two flying geese units. So that's why we only need four squares. And I'm going to do the same thing. We'll put right sides together. Okay, I'm going to go from here on down. And now I'm going to trim and press and then sew the squares to the other side. Now I have two flying geese units. Okay, I missed a bunch of footage for putting the rest of these flowers together, but I can sh explain to you what I did. Um, I made the blue flying geese units here, and these red flying geese units had already been made. So what I did was I took the um, B rectangles of this fabric and sewed on the size K squares. Um, those are the squares that have a uh, line drawn diagonally on those. Sew those on so that the diagonals go opposite of each other. And then I sewed number or letter L squares to both sides of the red flying geese units and the blue flying geese units. And then I sewed those three units together. So it's really not that difficult. So you have two of these units here and now I need to sew all the units together and the directions are are uh, really good. They have a lot of good visuals. So I'm going to take this unit and I'm going to sew one of these flower units this direction to it. Like that. So I'm going to put these right sides together and sew them. And I do have one seam here that I'm going to um, nest the seams. And that's the only thing I have to match up. Um, I have the point here on the flying geese unit that I want to watch and make sure I don't blunt off the tip of that. So I'm going to keep that a close eye on that. the seam and get my raw edges lined up. Okay. So what we have now is this. And then we're going to press this seam towards the larger flower unit. So that seam is pressed and this is what we've got. Now I'm going to sew the other flower unit to the letter G square. Okay, so I'm going to sew this flower. I'm going to hold it upside down and then this G square is going to go here. So we're going to sew the short end of that flower to this um, square here. So I'm going to pin it in place. I'm just matching up my ends and the center. And then I'm going to sew this from this side so I can watch the point. There's a point here 
So I want to watch that. Then we have this. So the flower hangs upside down. Then we're going to press towards the G square, so the plain square. Okay, now I can sew these two rows together. And I'm going to nest the seam here in the center and pin that. And I'm going to pin on each end. as well as in the center between each of these pins that I have. I'm going to go ahead and pin there. And um, I have one point on this side that I want to watch and then I have a point on this side that I want to watch. So to do that I can either mark it with a pen or a pencil or what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here in the cent near the center and go to the end and watch the way that seam is pressed. Now, if this seam was pressed this direction, I could see this um, point. So I, now I see why they wanted that pressed that way. So I'm going to go ahead and sew it as if it's pressed that way, and then I can repress it when I'm done. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the center, but I'm going to flip it over like that. And then sew down this direction. I can't get the whole block in there, but here we have that. So I'm going to go ahead and press this seam, and then we need to work on the stem unit. Okay, to make the bias stems, you need your fabric pieces that you cut on the bias, and you need a um, bias tape maker for half inch. So this is a half of an inch bias tape maker and I'm going to put um, the side that has the groove, I'm going to pull that up and put my fabric, I already have a point on it, you can cut that off and make it, um, you don't want it blunt but you could have a different a point like that if you want. I'm just going to leave it like this but have the right side down in that channel and you're going to slide it in there until it comes out. And you want to adjust it so that you have an even amount of fabric on both sides. And it usually doesn't take a whole lot of work to do that. And then I'm going to set it down, touch, hold it down with the tip of my iron here. And then as I pull the tool back 
I'm going to slide the iron right behind it. I don't want to get too far away from it because it'll make the tape wider and I don't need it wide, I need it at a half inch. So I'm just going to do this slowly. So I have more room here. And try not to hit that piece with your iron because it gets hot. And uh, you know, you don't want to burn your fingers. So that's why this little loop is here. You're actually supposed to pull it with this loop. why my iron keeps beeping at me but okay now I have my bias tape and any place I don't like I can see what's going on there and see if I can fix that Okay, so I have a previous piece that I previously made and um, now I need to position this onto the block. So I get my iron out of the way and bring my block over. And your long piece will go here. So you want it to go to the end of the block. So that's your largest piece. And you want, I'm going to go ahead and trim this. Down and um, I'm going to fold that edge under. So I don't want the raw edge showing. And then line that up with my flower here. And I'm not worrying, I've got little pieces of it peeking out. I don't worry about that because I can tuck those in as I sew it down. But I'm going to go ahead and pin this on here. Right there. And then just bring it right across through the center of that intersection to the end of this piece here. And you can glue this down, you can pin it down, and whatever works best for you. I think for right now I will just pin just be careful you don't stretch this because it's on the bias so it is really stretchy. And then this piece will make these two stems. These don't use much either so I'm going to go ahead and trim that off. Fold the edge under and what I did for my block is, it goes this way. I want this end to, I'm going to press this so it will hopefully stay down a little better. And line that up here with the edge of the block here. So you can see that and pin that down. And then this curve, this piece curves, it's going to curve around and come down to about the intersection of where all of these come together. And you can adjust that however you want. So I want it about there. And so I'm going to trim that. And tuck it under. Remove pins as I go if I need to. I'm 
going to go ahead and press that to get it into the shape I want it to be. that here I'll do some trimming here in a minute I want to do this side now so I'm going to go ahead and fold this end over and press it and this is going to line up to this edge of this flower is going to go this way. Let me get my iron in. Press that. And tuck that under. go ahead and start pinning these curves here. trim the excess here. Now on this one I don't have to trim much. I'll just trim a little bit. And then trim, or then pin all of these intersections together. Okay, now that's ready to applique down. You can applique it down however you want. You can do it by hand. You can use a zigzag stitch. You can use a blanket stitch, um, which is what I used here on this one. I used a blanket stitch and I just used the 50 weight thread that I had in the machine because it matches with the background. I didn't have anything that matched this blue. So I used uh, the thread that matched the background and it does I think it does not detract from this blue I think they're pretty close in shade in the same shades so I will take this to the machine and stitch this down now okay so I need to change the foot on my machine and I'll put on my embroidery foot And I'm going to go ahead and do these first. So I'm going to use stitch 21. I'm going to set, set my width to 3.0 and my length to 2.0. And I'm just going to tuck in any ends that I don't want showing. Okay, I'm putting my pin cushion back on.
Now I don't haven't followed very many quilt patterns because I normally just do my own and um, the patterns that I have on my blog are ones that I created myself and I can do that just by looking at the block and I can figure out how it goes together. Um, this is one that um, was going to need to be changed and changed in kind of a big way with eliminating the diamonds and uh, I found somebody who had already done that so that was one block that I felt I didn't need to redo so here is the finished block and I'll tip that so that maybe you can see it a little bit better and I think it turned out really well and um, I just need to you know trim off this to so I put my scissors here we go Just trim that off flush with the block and uh, there we go so the embroidery part wasn't that difficult um, I hope you give that a try and uh, maybe give this block a try so the link to this pattern is in the description box below so click on that and check around on their website for other blocks they have quite a few free patterns on their site which is great and um, of course you can shop in their store and buy pre-cuts and yardage and notions and all kinds of things so um, you might want to give them a try I hope you enjoyed the this video on the Carolina block um, as I said at the beginning there's several different variations of this block and it has a couple of different names you may see it as the North Carolina block you may see it as Lily um, there's a couple of different uh, names that I've come across while I was researching this block this is an older pattern and I think it's really pretty I think it would look really nice in a you know a full-size quilt like the English Ivy that I put together so um, I hope you give this block a try this is a little bit more than a beginner block but I think this is a good place to start if you're you're feeling really confident with beginning blocks and you want to advance and do something different this will uh, <clears throat> give you practice more practice with flying geese and the um, the unit here like this one you're you know you're putting an extra piece in there uh, a corner and then you have a little bit of uh, applique on there so um, using and making bias strips so there's um, several different techniques there that um, you can try and with those bias strips you know if you don't want to uh, do the applique you could do the fusible web and I would still recommend that you do that on the bias of the fabric though because you are uh, curving these lines here and that'll make it a lot easier for you you may be able to do it on straight of grain but I wouldn't recommend it I would recommend that you still do it on the bias I think you'll get a much better look that way um, but that's just another option and then of course you can still do the embroidery stitches on top of it or you can leave it raw edge um, you could just use a straight stitch to you know stitch close to the raw edge if you want so a lot of options there for you so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to click that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and click that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up and in the meantime I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching for more quilting ideas click on the video links and to keep up with my latest projects click on the subscribe button I hope to see you again soon